Troy, what are you doing? Oh, whoa. Sorry, I was fast asleep. I was just dreaming that BMW made an M3 Touring. What a dream. Hey guys, welcome to my first look video on the brand new M3 Touring, codenamed the G81. I'm pretty excited about this today. Even though we're not gonna to get to drive it, just having a quick look around it is unbelievable. Seeing it in real life, just like when I first saw the G80 and the G82, it's just incredible. I know we've only seen leaked pictures of it and pictures of it in camo, but in this beautiful chalk color, which is gonna be a new color in the lineup on the configurator for the M3 Touring, it's just stunning. 2022 celebrates 50 years of M, and during those 50 years, BMW have never produced an M3 Touring in production form. They came close with the E46, but unfortunately that never made it. So this is the first time that we've seen a Touring M model in this segment. If you wanted a fast sort of three series Touring, you either go to Alpina and buy their B3, or you'd go to Audi and buy the RS4. The first time I knew about this M3 Touring was when Marcus Flash put up a teaser pic on his Instagram of one. It was in a really dark room, but you could make out that it was a Touring and that was about it. And that was back in August 2020, which was actually a good six months before even the Saloon and the M4 Coupe hit the, uh, hit the roads. So since then, there's been a lot of anticipation for this car. And yeah, once again, just seeing it in the flesh is just unreal. It's really, really exciting. This is obviously going to sit alongside the current uh, M3 and M4 lineup, also not forgetting the M4 convertible. And under the skin, it's well essentially the same as my M3 Competition X-Drive. So we've still got the S58 under the bonnet, three litre straight six twin turbo, 510 horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque. And the M3 Touring is only available as an X-Drive option. In terms of gearboxes, well, you probably guessed it, it's only available with the ZF eight-speed gearbox, and that's gonna be globally as well, not just in the UK. So we're not missing out essentially. I think in the Touring, the automatic or the ZF eight-speed is gonna make most sense most of the time. In terms of weight penalties, well, it's actually surprising to hear that this only weighs about 30 kilos more than the M3 Saloon equivalent. When you consider you've got the much bigger boot, this is 500 litres, which is the same as your regular 3 Series Touring, and with the seats down, that goes up to 1,500 litres, so perfect for when you're taking mountain bikes out or whatever, if you're moving house, whatever you want to do with the M3 Touring, you've got it covered. And yeah, it's a really nice and usable space. And just like a regular three series touring, you can open the top part of the boot, just like, like that. So you can load in your shopping, etc. Um, but really handy and lovely thing to have. And it's great to see that it's made it to the M3 Touring. You'll see up here, there's almost like a gurney flap as well. So that's different to your regular um, three series touring. When you get around the side of the car, well, obviously it's got the trademark M3 flared rear wheel arches and they look fantastic on this car. I really think they just set off the whole back end of it. It's just such a good looking thing. The wheels, well, they're very familiar. Staggered setup, just like it is with the saloon. So we've got 19 inch on the front axle and 20 inch on the rear axle. And in fact, from the B pillar forwards, it's pretty much exactly the same as an M3 saloon until we jump inside, but we'll get there shortly. And as we talked about under the skin, it's essentially the same as an M3 competition X-Drive saloon, although I suspect that the rear spring rate's a little bit higher to cope with those sort of extra weights, especially when you've got it loaded up with luggage. In terms of performance figures, well, BMW claim it will do the 0 to 62 sprint in just 3.7 seconds. As we know, that's always a conservative figure. So you're probably looking at closer to three and a half seconds. And being X-Drive, it's gonna do that rain or shine. 
And in terms of top speed, BMW claim it will do 174 miles an hour. I'm guessing that's also limited. That should be quick enough, especially for the UK customer. This Touring is not going to be sold everywhere. The main markets are going to be um, Germany, the UK, Korea, uh, Japan, and Australia, which makes me happy because I'm half Australian. But where it's not going, and perhaps one of BMW M's most important sort of markets, is America. So I'm really sorry about that, guys. I do hear, even on like M340i Touring videos, I get a lot of comments from Americans saying they wish they had that car over there. But the 3 Series Touring is not homologated for the States. Therefore, the M3 Touring is well, it's not going out there. So yeah, I am sorry about that, guys. In terms of pricing, well, this was filmed a few months before you're watching it, and I don't have confirmed pricing with me, but I'm guessing looking at an M3 Competition X Drive, well, they're retailing it just under 80 grand at the moment. This is probably going to have maybe a one to 2,000 pound premium on that. Although in Germany, they're predicting it's going to be the same as the M3 Competition X Drive saloon. So I'm not sure because you do lose things like the carbon roof. So that's obviously going to bring the cost down a little bit for the overall build. But anyway, what is a couple of grand? Look at this. It's just, to me, it's, it's a winner. I can't wait to get it. I've only just picked up my M3 Competition X Drive. I've said that a few times. I am aware of that. But I've only just picked mine up and I'm already massively excited about this car. Now, although we're here to look primarily at the back end of this car because it is the Touring. I really think where you're looking at it from now is its best angle. Obviously it has the controversial uh, grills in it that I think worked really well with this car. In fact, better than the Saloon or the M4 because there's so much going on behind its nose. This car also has the optional carbon pack. So you can see it has uh, different intakes down here, just like my M3 and it has the optional visibility pack or light laser lights, which I think are a must have on M cars. They look good and obviously in terms of the way they work at night, they're unbelievable. Also for the eagle-eyed viewers, you might be able to see that this has got the 50 years of M badging. So on the front, on the back and on all four of the wheels. But yeah, this is a proper bit of kit. Let's head inside and see what changes have been made to the interior. The interior, well, it's very, very familiar in here, especially with this Fiona red leather. So hats off to, I'm guessing it's Martin who spec this particular car. I feel very at home being the same as my M3. Although it's not the same, you probably already spotted that we have this curved display in here. Uh, that curved display is the same one that you see in cars like the i4 and the iX. Obviously, it's trickling into all of BMW's models. You'd be mistaken for thinking this is a full LCI car, though. This is just a mild update, so we've got this new interior. I think the full LCI 3 Series M3, M4 is going to come towards the end or the middle of 2023. So on the exterior, they're pretty much the same, but when you jump inside, you're greeted with this uh, curved display. In terms of spec, well, I don't know exact specs, but I'm guessing being the competition only model, you're going to get quite a high um, standard specification, just like you do with the current M3 and M4. So things like Harman Kardon, head up display, leather interior, although this one has the extended leather. So we've got it on the top of the um, doors here and we've got it on the dashboard. It's very nice. I don't have that in my particular car. This one is also fitted with the carbon pack. So we've got some carbon accessories on the outside, the intakes around the front, just like with the M3 Saloon. And then when you jump inside, well, we've got these carbon buckets, which as you know, I absolutely bang on about all the time. And yeah, I can't get enough of them. They're so comfortable and so supportive. Now let's just talk a little bit about this curved display. So. Inside it houses the new iDrive 8 or operating system 8, um, which is BMW's very latest. So I'm not too familiar with that system as yet, but there's some very familiar menus once you go down to this control panel um, and start cycling through them. While we're on this control panel, we've got the iDrive controller here still, the touch 
uh, touchpad one, which is a massive plus for me. Although we're going down this touchscreen route, it's great to see that BMW have still retained some buttons down here and the all important iDrive controller. What isn't that great is all of the climate control um, functions, etc., are all on the touchscreen system now. So I think for me, that's going back a step a little bit. And I think it's going to be difficult to operate and use when you're on the move with the stiffer ride in the M cars. Although this has got voice control, so you can ask the car to do what you want it to do. But yeah, it's a little bit gimmicky for me. So let's go down here and press the setup button. Uh, we've got all of the settings that we do have in the saloon and the M4 Coupe. So we've got engine, chassis, steering, brake, M, X drive as well. Obviously, you can switch between four-wheel drive where it sends fairly equal power and torque to all four wheels. Four-wheel drive sport where it sends a lot more to the rear axle. And then we've got two-wheel drive where it basically decouples the front axle just like it does in my M3. And then below that, you have a 10-way traction control system, which... I think is really relevant and handy in the rear wheel drive, let's say M3 and M4, but in the X drive versions, well, yeah, you kind of really either need it on most of the time when you're on the road and off if you take it on track. In terms of the actual binnacles in front of me, well, I guess they're all right. You can see the clarity of the graphics is much nicer than, let's say, the, the, the system that's in my M3, but yeah, I just don't like the shapes and stuff of the rev counter and the speedo, etc. I don't like all of that. I would prefer, especially in my M car, some traditional circular dials. But I'm sure this is going to appeal to a lot of people. And it certainly does look very, very modern in here. We've got the same lovely steering wheel. It's great to see that BMW haven't added any extra um, girth to the rim. Could be a little bit thinner but it's definitely not too bad and we've got these lovely carbon fiber paddles at the back here that i remember raving on about when i first sat in um, that initial g80 and g82 in a studio as well it's just such a nice finish you see them all the time they look so good but everything else in here well it's very familiar up here we've got a much longer roof obviously being a touring um, there is no panoramic roof option which I guess makes sense because it's an M car. Although I think if you're using this car to do everything with, which you know a lot of people uh, will probably do, it would be nice when you've got the family and stuff in the back um, to open the roof. Talking about the back seats, well, obviously it's not much different in there compared to the saloon, but you do get a bit more headroom and it does feel a bit less claustrophobic. And in fact, I've got a six foot cameraman back there with all of his camera gear and he's back there pretty comfortable. So it gives you a good idea of how much space there is. And then you've got the 500 liter boot behind him. And in terms of actual driving position, well, it feels identical to me to my M3, which makes sense because as we talked about on the outside from the B pillar forward, it's identical, obviously, aside from this curved display, I guess, the last thing we should do really is start it up and see what it sounds like. We're in a studio, so we can't go crazy. <laughs> Obviously we can't drive it either, but it'd be good to see what the engine notes like. So I'm in Sport Plus at the moment, foot on the brake and... It's hard for me to say, but it sounds like there's a slightly different tone there, which would make sense just because of the acoustics of the uh, of the touring um, but now I can see those dials and yeah there's a lot going on there in fact let's go to M mode and see see what that brings up okay yeah it's very complicated but most importantly um, I've got the speed in the middle and everything else looks very similar to the system that's in my car let's kill that because I just want to steal this now and take it for a proper drive. And I will be doing that obviously in the coming months when I can get my hands on one. But hopefully you've enjoyed this first look at this gorgeous G81 M3 competition touring. I certainly can't wait to get mine. Until the next time guys, take it easy and I'll see you soon. Cheers.